Hi everyone, my name is Fajar Andi Wibowo. I'm MBA student of IPMI International Business School. I would like to present about Nobel Prize winner in 1995 by Robert Lucas Jr., which is explain about a, a theory and hypothesis of rational expectations. And I hope you will enjoy and let's start the video. Economics is about people and how they decide what they do. The rational expectations dancing, they're making a forecast, they're probably doing it well. We're trying to describe a, a whole economy of th 300 million people in, 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 in six or eight <laughs> equations. It, it, you know, that's abstraction. I'm visiting in the faculty at uh, New York University and uh, I'm staying for four weeks. It's good to go get out and see the world. And it's good to have a change. Big deal for me was Communist Manifesto, March at Engels in 1848. I was just hugely excited by that. <laughs> that that's what you could do with history. And, and you know, it was all kind of economics in a way. I mean, that's what, what Marx is. So there's a lot of great stuff going on in economic history. You know, we're not Marxists anymore. But to me, the centerpiece of history is kind of the lives of ordinary people, how they work, what they do, what they know. I think, you know, I kind of got that starting with, with, with Marx, and, and uh, that same idea seems to me to be, it's, it's what, I, what I like to do. Everything I do is driven by something like that. I mean, economics is a lot of fun, and uh, it's just fun when you get into new territory when you can't solve the problem. And you're working, you're thinking, you try, you get it wrong, and then when it comes together, it's great. Rational expectations this is a technical term for technical people. Uh, but, but the common sense of it is, that when people are deciding on whether to buy a house or buy a car or put their child through college, they're thinking ahead. They're, they, they have to have some vision of, of what's going to pay off. Is the house going to be a, a value go up or down? Is, is, the, is the child who goes to college going to get a job or not? These are the questions people care about. We, we want to take that into account. So we, oftentimes we talk about people as though everybody's acting in exactly the same way for exactly the same reasons. Uh, now, uh, there's no such thing, obviously. There's no point in, in setting out complicated theories that you can, where, where you can't work out their consequences. I mean, that, that's, that's nothing. Thing. Complication is, is the enemy. The model of rational expectation built from two factors. Anticipated policy, which is explained about the equilibrium model with rational expectation, just on aggregate demand multiplied by aggregate supply level. Suppose on the exogenous change, so delta M will be higher than zero. People from expectation of price change as a consequence of change in M. Rational expectation, if people anticipate the monetary policy and there is no other random shock, then they will make a proper forecast of price because they have a full information, they don't make a systematic errors. So in this case, given the price change, both aggregate demand and aggregate supply will shift. 
as you can see on the graph anticipated monetary change for example increasing money supply by government part of expansionary policy so the aggregate demand one will in move up to aggregate demand two and aggregate supply one will move to aggregate supply three so you see from the the a will move to b and aggregate demand shift to the right from from y1 to y2 aggregate supply move from aggregate supply one to aggregate supply three from the horizontal direction as you see the node of y3 is equal y1 move to the right to y2 and in term of uh, price from p1 increase to the p2 and increase to the p3 following the increasing of aggregate supply for the second model as an anticipated policy suppose that the change in monetary policy is not anticipated by the household or generally people they don't aware on it and some random shock will appear then the household will not properly forecast the price level but firms will do so here resulted only aggregate demand shift, but aggregate supply does not so there is a new equilibrium level of employment and output as a consequence of change in the monetary policy in a graph of unanticipated monetary change as you can see from the horizontal direction which is represented by uh, aggregate demand or output and vertical direction is in the P which is represented by price and you see the long run term of periods here the aggregate demand will shift to the right while it will define aggregate demand too and there is a B note that will be a new note of equilibrium so the output from y1 to y2 is part of the shifted aggregate demand 1 to aggregate demand 2 in term of price it will move up from p1 to p2 finally anticipated and unanticipated policy which is actually anticipated the household immediately adjusts and it expectation of course the behavior so the market will clearing vertical and the aggregate supply will classical here for the unanticipated household make mistake from the shock so the equilibrium move along the positive slope Lucas aggregate supply so new equilibrium output and employment so however given the rational expectation preposition this is not the end of the story in the next period household learn their mistake and will adjust and return back anyway to the why okay part of conclusion the critical assessment basically new classical economy as a great leap forward but a lot of criticism rational expectation cost to obtain information what is the correct model of the economy risk versus uncertainty in term of continuous clearing a sluggish adjustment of price and wage involuntary unemployment empirical study mentioned about empirical support for non neutrality of the money so anticipated nominal money change has an impact of the real output so as a permanent legacy rational expectation as opposed to the AHH adopted by all subsequent macroeconomy school let's see next unanticipated and unanticipated policy at equilibrium approach the real business cycle school in a Philip curve there are three points we can learn in the first case even in the short run the increased money supply had no effect on the output or price in the second case, the results are the same as under adaptive expectation. First, 
an increase in output without wage increase, then an increase in wage rate, and a decline in output to its original level. This is the story of short run versus long run Philip curve. Well, as a story of business application, there is a difficulty in estimate rational expectation model of dynamic economic behavior are contrast with quasi-rational expectation model. As for example, a multivariate model of United States beef cattle supply derived from dynamic optimizing behavior is estimated using q model in contrast to the recent influential of Rosen study at 1994. The model take an adequate account of complex and changing structure of industry, particularly shifted finishing of ranch and farm to the feedlots, and a way in which the USDA generates statistical time series use. So, Proper analysis are based on quarterly and monthly data since 1944 and permits a detailed treatment of dynamic structure of history beef production. Well, as a conclusion, there are six points that we can brief the first one, he used a variable to demonstrate how the economy responds to the new targets. It is required to have more justification for this than reference to the past driven parameters. Second, this is due to a different view on how private agents respond to a change in economy policy. The third one, they are not guided by past events and experience. The fourth one, a micro foundation, as proposed by Lucas, put upon the aggregate structure, therefore, leading the strong but not convincing assumption of a traditional model behind it. Five, since private agent anticipate monetary disturbance, any monetary policy is ineffective. And last, any real effects in the economy occur only through price level surprise or in the other words difference between anticipated and non-anticipated monetary shocks well i hope you had enjoyed my video and thanks for watching